In this lesson, things get even more interesting, because you will learn how to create reports that catch the attention of the viewer, a little more easily than just pure text. Let's start by looking at gauge reports. I really like gauges, and as you will learn in the future lesson, you can display them in the results of your queries in the grid and they look beautiful and are very useful, but when it comes to gauges and reports, I don't think they're as useful because in a report you can have more data in addition to the gauge itself. For example, I cannot have a report that includes the name of the employee, and a gauge for its salary. A gauge report can only include data from one column, which is what the gauge is going to be based on. For this reason, in reports, I only use gauges as child reports, and I think they are great for that purpose. So, I'm going to edit my previous department's report and I'm going to add a new child report, which is going to be a gauge. I'm going to call it salaries, because my intention is to use the gauge to display the sum of salaries of all of the employees of the selected department. OK. Here I have to select the gauge style. And now, here in the query, I have to retrieve the sum of salaries of the department, so, select, sum of sol. From em, where, and now I have to add a condition that creates the relation to the main report. You remember how to do that, right? Where depno is, is equal to deptno, as a bind variable. OK, let's test what we have so far. Check this out. That dial looks beautiful, don't you think? And when I click on the departments, the value of the dial changes, telling me the sum of the salaries of that department. But, what are these numbers and colors? What do they mean? Well, there are four additional numbers you can define for a gauge which make it provide more context to the value of the gauge itself. In this case, 0 and 100 are the minimum and maximum values, and 33 and 66 are thresholds, so that the viewer knows easily that any value in the red zone is considered low, and any value in the green zone is considered high. These are the default limits and thresholds, but you can provide or configure your own values, which make sense for the specific data you are displaying. One of the ways to provide those values is here, in the property section. So, I'm going to leave 0 as the minimum, but I'm going to set 11,000 as the maximum, because I know that is enough for all of the departments in this case. But what I use here really depends on the data you are going to include. And for the low threshold I will set 3,000 which means that, for me, a department with total salaries below 3,000 is considered too low. And for the high threshold, I will use 10,000. Let's run it again. This is better. Right? Now, these four values are fixed in the report definition in this case, but I can also tell the report that they will be provided by the query, which allows them to change dynamically depending on the data. I just have to select this option. And then I have to modify the query to include the values, and this is very important. The query must provide the values in the following order. In the first column it must return the value for the gauge itself, which in this case is the sum of salaries. In the second and third positions, it must return the minimum and maximum values in that order. And in the fourth and fifth columns it must return the low and high thresholds in that order as well. You don't need to provide specific aliases, and the names of the columns can be anything, but they must be provided in the correct order. So, I'm going to add them here. In this case, just for the sake of this example, I'm going to provide them as constant values, but you could use any aggregate or analytic function to derive the limits and thresholds from the data.
Okay. You might have noticed that here in the property section, there's gauge type that you can select. We are using the dial type, but there is also a status meter type, which looks like this. Again, the limits are at both ends of the bar, and the thresholds are marked with colors. And the actual value of the gauge is the black bar in the center. Pretty awesome, huh? But in this case, I prefer the dial, so I'm going to change it back. Okay, I'm done with this report, so I'm going to apply. And there is my new report, which I think you will agree is a little more interesting.